Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Today we'll be talking about uh, confidence and rejoicing in hope. Uh, the Bible says uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. In other words, when you just lose hope, and it, it happens to all of us, sometimes you can get to a point where you just start losing hope. I remember it was a time when I was I just start losing hope, not in faith or in Christ, just going through so many trials. You start feeling hopeless. Then you start feeling helpless because there's no one there, uh, it seems. But the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us, right? The Messiah, hallelujah, he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he's always there. And he will dispatch angels. All you have to do is call on him. Like the old church mothers used to say, just call on him, call. All right, so be it, amen. So we're going to go forward in scripture as Apostle Paul is talking to the Hebrews. And we're going to get it to the book of Hebrews, chapter 3. Only believe and have confidence. The Bible also says in the 10th chapter, I believe, the Hebrews has not away thy confidence for it has great recompense of reward in other words don't just do away with your confidence because if you keep confidence you have a great uh, reward hallelujah and stop thinking it's always money alright just getting through some of these days in the last days alright hallelujah 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 ah yes barakatayah hallelujah 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 then hallelujah so let's go Let's get it. Hebrews chapter 3. And it reads, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, my mind, and this is talking about the restoration, where we will be taken to new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. All right? He is the chief. Right, got folks walking around talking about day apostles and all this kind of stuff. Last I checked, it was 12, and of course, the Messiah. So, here we go. Who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house? And on that apostle thing, you know, there's a scripture that says, uh, false apostles, some calling themselves apostles. Uh, for you know, there, there were that kind back then, and even we see now, like, like Paul said, even now the Antichrist is walking amongst us. But anyway, let's, let's stick with this, this scripture here. Hallelujah. Talking about the Messiah who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. You know, we know the story of Moses. And how the Most High uh, commanded Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. That's how you know there's a lineage. For they should call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people. If my people will humble themselves, hallelujah, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. A lot of this stuff is not taught in the church, and a lot of pastors are going to be dealt with according to Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, which says, Woe unto the pastors who leadeth my flock astray. Hallelujah. And we talked about the Christmas tree in Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, and um, we talked about when the new year really starts, which is, which is in Exodus, the 12th and 13th chapter, the month of Abib, A-B-I-B, or Nisan, like Nissan, Nissan Maxima, Nissan Altima, you know, so which means the first month, and that month is March, April, and you can tell when the new year begins, because you see the sun, no more snow, birds, bees, the green, the landscape is growing, that's when the new year begins, not January 1st, when it's still cold outside, but anyway, we do things as they are here, but biblically, the year does not begin until the springtime, and that's why the most high is showing you a new year is beginning. No more snow, harvest, seeds, flowers growing, all that. But anyway, let's continue with the message. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, talking about the most high Christ, and as much as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. Now remember, Christ built all things. All right, some, some men can have honor inside of a house, but Christ is built all things. Hallelujah. And we are that house, the body of Christ, not meaning lights, buildings, walls, but the body. He he is the head of the God, he, the Godhead bodily. Okay, so all of the sinews and joints and everything 
um, the diversities of gifts work all the way into Christ and Christ into the heavenly Father. Hallelujah. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And we're reading this in, this in the scriptures. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. Because you know Moses' mother had, they were, the Egyptians were killing the Hebrew Israelites. And she tried to put him in a basket, she put him in a basket and went down in water. And Pharaoh's, the enemy's daughter, found baby Moses and took him as her own son and raised him up in all of the ways of the Egyptians. However, when push came to shove, as we used to say back in the day, Moses refused to be called an Egyptian and stood up as a Hebrew Israelite as, you know, and so did Paul in the New Testament. He said, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Christ is a Hebrew Israelite. You know, so it's not saying uh, like a lot of, you know, hate this, hate these people. Hate. That's not that. The scriptures clearly state Jacob, who is Israel himself. Jacob, I love Esau, I hate it. Who was Jacob? Jacob's name was changed to Israel when he wrestled with God and God wounded his hip. Israel or Jacob had 12 sons. Those are the tw children of Israel or children of Jacob. 12 tribes of Israel, 12 tribes of Jacob. They had families, but we were spread up spread about all the four corners of the earth. Why? Because we did not keep the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments. Just like today, walking in foreign religions, worshiping uh, bullhorns, worshiping uh, goats, rams, anything you name, false gods, statues that can't see, can't talk, can't hear, all these things the Bible talks about. You know, we were put on slave ships and sent to the land of the north. You know, that's in Deuteronomy uh, 28. And in uh, Jeremiah 16 and 17, it talks about coming to the land of the north, and a whole bunch of things. And Esau, the Bible says in Genesis 25, was born red and hairy, hairy all over like a hairy garment, and he was a hunter. And that's this day, we see Esau still hunts down animals, things, even people, because Esau wants his place back over Jacob. But it is written, the elder shall serve the younger. So, um, that's why she was told that there's a two nations, two manner, that means two different nations in her womb, you know. And so, but anyway, let's continue with the scripture for those. And so that Esau became a people called the Edomites and so on and so forth. And they became a, a hairy people, you know, looking like Chewbacca or Cousin It or whatever. But, um, you know, God said, Jacob, I love Esau. I hate it. Esau does different things uh, to this day. But my thing is not preaching Preaching hate, no, preaching the truth and not everything on discriminative things against people and all that or um, radicalism and all this, none of that stuff. Just hold to the fire and the power and the sword of the spirits, you know, and that's what we do try to wake Israel up. It's high time they wake up out of sleep, the true Israel, because there's two different Israels. If you read Revelations chapter 2 verse 9 and Revelations chapter 3 verse 9 and Titus chapter 1 verse 14. You will see that. But let's continue with the scriptures. So be it. But Christ as son over his own house. Whose house are we? See, that's the, the, uh, the body of Christ. Us, whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence, the rejoicing of hope, firm to the end. See, only believe in holding those things together. The confidence and the rejoicing and the, and the hope. But that's the message. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works for 40 years. So they were stuck in the wilderness 40 years because they was wanted to go back and worship the Egyptian gods and do all kind of things instead of going on in the works of the Most High. And you see that to this day. You know that a lot of Hebrews are confused because a lot of truth has been um, stalled and it's been cut, you know, all the way down to the image of the Messiah, a whole lot of things. The, in, the lineage is not even discussed, it's not even in the conversation. And people say, well, it doesn't matter, God is a spare and it doesn't really matter. It does matter, you know, and the Bible states that it does matter in Revelation chapter 1, verse 13, 14, and 15. And um, he has a people. It says he's going to take his people back to the land. You know, we are the apple of his eye. So a lot of people, it's not a big thing because a lot of people of all nations know who we are, but the who we are don't know who they are. So they all messed up, divided and conquered and want to wild out on each other instead of waking up. 
So, but not all Israel will be saved. All right, so let's continue. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of the temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Don't tempt the most high. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. And the Bible also says, grieve not his ministers. For they don't exercise the sword of the wrath of the spirit in vain. It's not profitable for you. We watch for your souls. So don't grieve the ministers that are really walking in truth and bringing out the truth. The last day prophets. Touch not thine anointed. Do thy prophets no harm. We're here for you. We watch your soul. We edify you. We love you. We try to build you up. But if you think in open or in secret, you're going to attack. Be careful. Because the Messiah sees all things. And he will take vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith Yah, saith the Lord. And we will exercise the sword. But we walk in love. What did Christ say? He was sent to his own possession again. Sent to his own. And his own received him not. So I swear in my wrath, that's what you don't want to be. And we need to say the wrath of the spirit, they shall not enter my rest. Don't you want to enter the rest in the heavenly kingdom called New Jerusalem? Heaven is called New Jerusalem according to the Bible. Hallelujah. And around the gates are the 12 names of Israel's children and the 12 names of the apostles. The apostles. Not people walking around saying they the apostle. All right. Let us continue. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. You see that? Take heed, unless you get an evil heart and depart from the most high living God. We're talking about those gods that's dead, those names you bring up that don't that don't exist. You can dig up their bones. Hey God, see, Rum Shi Halarasio. We're talking about the most high who got up off the cross. When they went to check, he was not there. Hallelujah. All right, so let's let us continue. Don't have an evil heart and depart from the most high and become entangled again with the bondage of this world. Let us continue. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So we should be hard, uh, um, hearkening to one another and building one another up instead of hardening our hearts. Not good. But in the last days, the love of many going to wax cold because some people just can't talk, can't speak, want to plot, want to backbite, want to whisper, want to tear you down, want to uh, put these false doctrines out on you and do all kinds of things. We will suffer, but we got to suffer with him to reign with him. Suffer with him to reign with him. And I don't mean raindrops, I mean reign in power. Hey, my God. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. So we're partakers, but that's if we hold, again, that confidence, that rejoicing, that hope. Let us continue. While it is said today, they're saying it again. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Don't provoke the Most High. Don't harden your heart. Have a humble heart and stop coming up against the word of the Most High. Not a good thing. It is a two-edged sword cutting down to the bone and the marrow, dividing the soul from the spirit. That's how powerful the word is. Hey, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will be here forever. He is the most high. He is the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Word, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. All right? For some, when they had heard did provoke, how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? They died in the wilderness. And to whom swear he that they should not enter his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see they could not enter in because of unbelief. We have to believe. Only believe. Only believe all things are possible if you only believe and just repent to the Lord and say forgive me be baptized in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost be baptized in his name get somewhere where they love you and not just love your money and get in this word Shalom <laughs>